thanks over to Mr. Kunal Seth from BNK Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Malika. I would like to welcome the management of Crompton Greens Consumer Electricals on the call and would like to thank them for giving us this opportunity. From the management team, we have Mr. Santim Kosla, the Managing Director, Mr. Matthew Job, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Sandeep Batra, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Yashwant Regev, Vice President in Strategy and Financial Planning. I will now request Mr. Shantan Kosla to give us some opening remarks and then we'll open the floor for NQ. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for dialing in to our analyst call for the quarter. Firstly, I hope all of you and your family are safe and healthy during these extremely challenging times. As always, and as has been for now uh, more than the last year, Health and safety of our employees continues to be our number one priority. The infection count among our employees, unfortunately, in this wave has been higher as compared to the previous one. We are extending all support required to all our employees as well as their families. We have set up unit-wise WhatsApp groups with senior members to assist with COVID-19 related emergencies and these groups have actually been extremely successful in helping us manage on the ground individual logistical challenges such as hospital beds or oxygen availability, etc. Our focus to curb the virus has also been to strictly follow work from home policy for all our offices, which we have been doing since uh, the first half of April. We are tracking vaccination very closely among our employees and in every way helping and encouraging them to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Up till now, 508 of our employees have received their first dose. Greater than 80% of employees above 45 years of age have been vaccinated. We have collaborated with hospitals and 1MG to organize camps and are continuing to do so for the 18 plus year segment as vaccinations become more available. We will, of course, bear all the costs of this vaccination program for all our employees and family members. We continue to stay closely in touch with all our employees and have been conducting regular town hall meetings to address concerns and identify areas where we as a company can help our employees and our broader stakeholder community through this crisis. Moving on to the business and a few comments on the business. Overall in the quarter, our business momentum continued its upward trajectory in the quarter. We witnessed robust growth in all months of Q4 over the corresponding period last year. And this growth was broad based with all our product categories, geographies and channels logging strong growth. Our ECD portfolio continues its stellar performance driven by all segments. The lighting B2C segment has continued its uh, growth momentum, which is driven both by volume and also value. The one segment of our business which continues to face some challenges is our lighting B2G, business to government, which largely is our key street light business and this is, continues to be challenged due to slow up, uptick from ESL and government orders in the quarter. The other challenge, of course, has been commodity headwinds. We have taken two price increases in tranches. Despite our pricing action taken over the last few months, we have only been able to cover part of the hike in commodity costs, which is continuing to build up pressure on material margins. The commodity price escalation is uh, unprecedented, as I mentioned before. And during this quarter, commodities were sequentially up by about 12% versus quarter three. And this has continued unabated with over May, May, April and May, commodity prices up a further 8% versus Q4. Obviously, our cost-saving program, UNATI, which has delivered such fantastic results on a consistent period, continues to be a free program. We have saved approximately 60 crores under this program in this quarter. 
A focus on efficient management of working capital has helped us further strengthen our cash position to 1,373 crores. We have maintained a healthy balance sheet and cash position, which, as we had said last year during the same time, we believe this will help us stand relatively better than a lot of our competitive set. We are best placed to tide over future uncertainty, aggressively ramp up once things normalize, and also ensure that you continue to invest in the long-term development of our business. We continue in this period to invest in development of R&D capability, alternative channels like rural, MOR, and e-commerce, the benefits of which have started showing results and long-term results will be realized even more over the years. We remain committed to develop innovative con- consumer meaningful products that offer superior value proposition flowing both into the top and the bottom line. Moving into a brief overview of our segment-wise performance. Here, uh, just to clarify, we don't normally talk about this, but I will also, to help provide perspective given the base period, talk a little about our sequential growth quarter to quarter and also January, February growth. This is simply to provide some additional perspective to all of you. Uh, given the uh, March base period issue uh, of last year. Our ECD business continued its momentum and delivered a 15% sequential growth quarter on quarter. In this quarter, our fans business grew 59%, growing close to 30% in January, February alone. On the back of strong performance across the entire range and product portfolio. Our strategic focus on premiumization continues with premium fans delivering 76% growth and premium decorated fans delivering 72% growth. Our entry into the super premium fan segment also continues to gain traction with this much momentum improving sequentially. Our range of new offerings over the last couple of months has been received well by the market. In the rolling 12-month period, we have gained a one point to market share in the overall fan business. Our funds business witnessed a 61% growth, with Jan and February growth at 18%. Both residential and agro pumps witnessed value growth of 64% and 53% respectively. Our renewed focus on building a leading appliance portfolio continued to deliver exponential growth of 74%. Jan, Feb, 40%. The growth was driven by all our key focus choice segments. Air coolers grew 74%, geysers 87%, mixer grinder 81%, and irons 86%. Moving on to lighting, uh, lighting business continued its Q3 momentum, and the B2B, sorry, the B2C business delivered about a 10% sequential value growth. Lighting revenues were 329 crores, registering a 15% growth over last year. However, the critically strategically important B2C LED business continued its growth strategy with B2C LED value growth of 41%. As I mentioned earlier, lighting B2G was down significantly as the business faces major challenges due to slow order pickup by the government and EESL. With capacity ramping up, cost-saving initiative delivered the desired results and sustained growth in our B2C business with less maintained lighting, EBIT margins and double digits in Q4 at 16%. Very importantly, after the past few years of price erosion in lighting, which, as you're all aware, has been an extremely turbulent period. Prices, especially in the key B2C segment, have largely stabilized, and category structural profitability has now been restored. On the supply chain over this quarter, all our factories are up and running. Productions of fans in our in-house units is 55% higher in Q4 over corresponding period last year. We are fully follow down all the safety norms and more laid down by the government and social distancing is continued to be strictly adhered to in all our factory premises. The continued momentum of our business gives us confidence that our key strategic choices are working to deliver superior results in spite 
of the challenging environment, we continue to invest in these areas. First, and go to market. Our superior partnerships with trade partners, where we have been empowering our channel partners to help them grow their business and continue to support them during these tough times, has resulted in continuous improvement in monthly bill dealers, reaching a record level in March. We are focused on improving reach. We have been making continuous efforts to improve the number of retail points where our products are available. Our fans' rolling 12 months reach has gone up by 3.3 points. Secondary sales tracking, which is a backbone of our new go-to-market through the information gathered from our tally patch, has enabled us to make more informed decisions and improve productivity and effectiveness of our program. Our tally patch now covers secondary sales data of greater than 80% of our total business. We are also continuing our focus and investment to harness the potential of rural channels, and that has been paying off handsomely for us. Our rural sales delivered exponential growth of 117% in Q4, 72% in the Jan Feb months over the same period last year, and growth of 60% sequentially. We continue to gain share in this critical opportunity market. Our presence in Channels like e-commerce and MOR, along with meaningful consumer engagement, has helped us deliver growth of 85% in Q4, 25% in January and February. We continue our consistent market share growth in this channel. Driving premiumization stays a critical strategic choice of ours, and which we had identified a few years ago, and it continues to drive our business. Our premium plan segment, as I mentioned, grew exponentially by 76% in Q4 over the same period last year. Super premium plan volume has doubled as compared to the same period last year. Our investment in consumer-centric product innovation continues. For us, we have to be the leader in developing products that are meaningful to consumers, futuristic in design and application. Our revamped portfolio and appliances is clearly being rewarded with exponential growth, while our broad range of product portfolio and fans, lighting, and pumps have helped out scale market share year by year. Even this year, where we have been continuously hit by the COVID pandemic, we have continued to invest in introducing a range of new products across all our categories, with more than 30 strong new product innovations having been launched across our categories. Move, moving on to talk a little bit about the current situation. With ongoing COVID second wave in India, clearly, which is far more virulent and penetrated much deeper as compared to the last one, Previously, the virus largely was spreading in urban towns and cities. However, this has expanded to go deeper into rural India. Even though there has thankfully been a reduction in case count over the past few days, we still are very much within the peak of this pandemic. While restrictions had eased in Q4, and it, that resulted in a strong performance, from the back end of April through the whole of March, we are seeing essentially the entire country and most retail markets in a state of lockdown. These closures started impacting the business in the second half of April and have essentially led to a complete shutdown through May. The situation in April and May is really not very different in terms of market closure as compared to March and April last year. Depending on the extent of improvement in circumstances, we believe we can expect a gradual return to normalcy in Q2. This is again similar to what we saw in the last year wave. 
we believe that the demand recovery would follow like it followed last year post reduction of covid cases and ease of restrictions as we were last year we believe this year we are equally well positioned to to go back with a vertical startup as we see markets opening hopefully through the second half of june the second key dynamic which i would like to just touch upon is commodities as you are aware all key commodities are currently at unprecedented levels this increase has happened in an extremely short span of time as i had mentioned earlier in q4 we saw a 12% increase in our overall commodity prices as compared to peak q3 and this is not easing off we have continued to see about an 8% increase through april and may as we talked before our focus on recovering on commodity prices is based on three key areas premiumization accelerated cost savings and pricing actions while obviously as i had mentioned we are doing very well on improving our mix and also on our accelerated cost saving unnati program that being said these commodity prices are unprecedented so pricing as as we have done in the recent past will continue to pay play a key role however all that being said we do expect continued margin pressure over the na- next couple of quarters finally to just take you over the to the final numbers the board of directors at its meeting on march 21st approved quarterly results of the company for the quarter ended 31st march total income for the quarter was 1522 crores ecd revenue stood at 1193 crores ebit margin at 18.1 light end revenue stood at 329 crores ebit margin expanded by 840 basis points versus corresponding period last year and stood at 16.1% improved operating leverage due to ramp up in activity in this quarter aided ebit material margin stood at 38% 30.8% PBT so that 231 crores versus 137 crores last year growing 69% PBT margin stood at 15.2% profit after tax for the quarter was 249 crores however this included an adjustment for the impact of an IT assessment order like to like tax after taking that into account grew 63.5% with that uh, i'd like to stop and address any questions that you all may have thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, Thank you. First, uh, with respect to the price increases that we have taken across in each product, Uh, if you can do a broad overview, and uh, secondly, uh, I mean, many of these price increases would be really steep. So, both all these lockdowns are lifted. Do you think the, uh, what's your view on the elasticity of demand uh, in while you are just opposing the price increase uh, that is likely to be there? So, basically, can demand take a hit to an extent because of all these price increases? If you can do a view on that in detail. Yeah, Matthew, you want to take that? yeah uh, in terms of the price increases we have already taken uh, around two rounds of price increases already uh, mm-hmm. you know one in around january february and one in uh, in may actually uh, mm-hmm. april may uh, 
so i would say the the price increase is between january and may you know the one the two two rounds or in some some cases in three rounds the prices mm-hmm. have increased by roughly 10% you know on on an overall you know 8 to 10% uh, now obviously you know the, the first round of price increase happened in february so at you know uh, at that point of time we did not see any significant uh, slowdown in demand and that's what you see in the numbers for the last quarter now in this quarter the price increases have been announced and implemented in effective april Feb- Ma- april may now it is uh, very difficult to predict you know what kind of impact that would have because now at the moment there is lockdown so we really do not know you know if if and what kind of impact it could have on the demand Uh, you know, it, it, it is almost impossible to predict. But the fact remains that the commodities are in a in a major uh, in a bull run, and I think all all there is no other choice but for the you know the all the players to take some level of price increase. Uh, typically, you know, you you uh, one round of price increase does happen around this period every year. But of course, we have had uh, you know this time uh, you know one round already before that. So that how that will impact is very difficult to predict. Hmm. The only only thing I'd add to what Matthew said is uh, this. Obviously, this commodity is uh, doesn't just affect us; it affects the entire industry. Uh, so, it is leaving brands with stronger go-to-market who tend to come out better in these situations. So, I think the strength of our brand, the strength of our go-to-market. plus the fact that we're continuing to invest in innovation while we're doing this will enable us to emerge relatively speaking in a better situation got it and in terms of other costs especially ad spend etc how much ad spend we had done at the percentage of top line the entire year and how is it likely to be over the next two years if you can give us Over, over, over the next two years, obviously this year there was a, a reduction in ad spend because uh, in the summer quarter last year we had cut back on spending uh, due to the first wave of COVID. This year, however, in the summer quarter we have continued to invest some amount because we were on IPL etc., but not at the same levels that we would have normally invested. moving forward once we get back into normalization we would expect the ad spend levels to continue to increase it will be on par with fi 19 levels fi 1920 uh i you know i just uh, to be fair can you just move on to someone else i mean i don't want to cut you short but uh, just to give everyone a chance and then you can sure. come back and uh, feel free to contact us separately if you want more details you know so sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Patel from IIFL Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, congratulations for uh, Rivers Hegel. And just want to highlight that uh, it's really happening to see the very transparent commentary from your side. And with some numbers in terms of margin pressure and commodity pricing. Okay, Mr. Patel, so this is the conference operator. There is a slight airy disturbance coming from your line, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. You may go Hello. ahead now. I think he is uh, dropped off. Let's move to the next question. Yes, sir. The line. Uh, Uh, the next question is from the line of Ankur Sharma from HDFC Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Good morning, and uh, you know, congratulations on the uh, great numbers. Uh, just had two questions. Uh, one on the uh, fan industry. Uh, you know, so if you could just talk about, uh, you know, what would have been the growth or the degrowth uh, we would have seen for the industry overall uh, for FY21, and also what would have been similar numbers for Crompton. Uh, the reason i asked this question is to understand the kind of share gains we may have had uh, uh, you know either from the unorganized or because of our own you know efforts in terms of new product launches and premiumization etc uh, uh, and uh, more importantly uh, you know the share gains of unorganized do you think that can sustain or even accelerate with the second wave um on on share 
on share, like uh, I think I talked before, we measure share based on consumption share from retail audit data, a third party retail audit data. Based on that data, and that's a share we report, on, on fans over the past 12 months rolling period, and the d- latest data is, like, is as of March, we have gained one point in share, market share. We are the largest share gainers in the category. This share gain has largely come not from organized, unorganized players as such, but people who have got very small brand positions in the fans category, even though they may be organized players with a major player in some other electrical categories. So we are gaining shares the fastest in this category over the past 12 months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. And, and so anything on the overall industry growth versus our growth for 21, if you have those numbers? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Matthew? Yeah, obviously, you know, like I, like we have mentioned in the previous calls, I think in the first half the market was obviously declining. But if I, if I look at the last two quarters only, yeah, let me let's separate the year into two halves because the growth first came into the market only in the second half of the year. So in quarter three and quarter four, you know, the market pulse data shows the market has roughly grown uh, around nine to ten percent. And obviously, we have grown uh, much faster as you have seen in the last quarter. Our fans' growth was. Uh, also around 30 to 40 percent, and this time again, it's, it's pretty strong. So, and that's how we have continued to gain share, as Shantanu mentioned. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please limit your questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Mayur Patel from IFL Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. I just uh, want to uh, thank uh, you guys for guiding us uh, in an extremely transparent way in terms of the margin pressure and the commodity prices. And Matthew was the first person and the only person in the sector in the conferences in February to highlight this trend very clearly. And everyone was painting a very rosy picture on the margin. So thanks, thanks a lot for that. Uh, just one clarification I wanted, uh, this 8% increase in April and May, is it uh, is it fair to say that we will either need to increase prices by 8% or uh, through mix and cost reduction, that 8% has to be mitigated or some part of that already you have taken a price hike in April? That's the only question from my side. Uh, um, Matthew, I didn't catch yeah, it. I, I, no, I will answer cap. the question. No, no, I will answer the question. Yeah. As we mentioned before, you know, in, in quarter four, there has already been a commodity um, a commodity increase roughly to the extent of 12%. This is in quarter four. In April and May so far, the commodities have further in- increased and so there's another 8% impact. So obviously the impact so far in terms of Q- from Q4 from now, because of the commodity inflation is roughly 20%. Now, obviously, as I mentioned some time back, uh, you know, in, in between, two and, between two to three rounds of price increase, I would say, 10 to 12% out of the 20% has been passed on to the market. Now, you know, like I mentioned, and, and like Chandra has mentioned in previous calls as well, the, the, the mitigation of the commodity increase has to happen to the combination of one price increase, of which I mentioned roughly commodity has gone up 20% uh, in, within these five months. And, and it, through price, we have passed half, okay? And the other two levers, which is mixed, and as and Santu also also mentioned, for example, in the last quarter, when 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 you know while fans grew, uh, you know the premium fans had grown by a factor of 1.5 times the overall fans growth. So our overall fans is very strong, but premium fans have grown nearly 70%. So obviously the continued drive to improve mix and number three is uh, is the Unnati program, the cost reduction program which we have very successfully run for many years. Now through a combination of these three. We try to, you know, uh, offset the the commodity increase, but 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 I think what one needs to keep in mind, it is not going to be possible, or it is not even the right uh, approach to try and negate on a quarter on quarter basis. Our intention and objective is to 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 retain our profitability, in, you know, on, on, not in a quarter to quarter, but in a way that sustains our top line growth while getting our margins back to normal levels 
within a two to three quarter kind of a framework. That's how we should. Uh, that's how we have been approaching this, and that's why. That's how I believe we should be approaching this. Not trying to offset on a month on month or on a quarter on quarter basis. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir, and uh, thanks again for the opportunity and on a good set of results. Uh, sir, my question is on again on the ECD side of the business. Uh, we have done really well on the new product launches in the past, like Jesus, and also uh, going ahead for FI22. If you can uh, possibly highlight some of the new product launches which are looking to do, and uh, given that the second wave of COVID has come, so any change on the timelines uh, side, if you can highlight, it would be really great to understand how uh, this uh, this part of the business shapes up going ahead. Thanks, sir. Okay. Okay, first, uh, in, ter in terms of um, COVID impact, yes, right now in April and May, the markets are shut. So there is a short-term impact in terms of the timeline. But like I mentioned earlier, given the strength of our balance sheet and our long-term commitment to investment in our business, we will continue, like we did last year, to invest in the appropriate superior new product introductions across our appliance range as the market opens up, just like we did last year. Now, we have had great progress in our appliance program over the last 12, 18 months, but we have still have huge opportunity for growth. We have made significant improvements in our share position in geezers, which we started the earliest, but we have literally just begun filling in the gaps in our portfolio, putting the right high-quality superior value propositions in various segments like mixers. So there is a lot of new product innovation planned in the existing categories to continue to grain our market share. We are still very low on share in small kitchen appliances, and we will continue to drive that, and we see a lot of uh, headroom for share and revenue growth, just like we did in Visa's. Thank yeah. you. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Garut from Ocean Dial Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So my question is, uh, yeah, last year in Q2, Q3, and even in Q4, we have seen a market share gain because of the uh, ground-level difficulty from business angle for many of your competitors as well. So, having said that, we are again into the second wave and even the commodity increase as such has kicked in. So, how do you see, uh, the? Uh, would this be beneficial for you to further gain your market share, accelerate it basically? I think someone else in the call also briefly mentioned about it going ahead. Do you see from a market share angle, uh, uh, gaining angle, helping you for a volume growth uh, from Q2, Q3 angle uh, uh, quarter? Sorry to interrupt, uh, um, sir. Uh, Mr. Garud, I would request you to mute your line while the management answers your question. There is a slight airy disturbance coming from your line. Uh, the uh, the simple answer to your question is yes. Like I mentioned, I think a little earlier, as the markets open up, we have learned and we successfully did it last year in terms of an ability to quickly have a vertical startup faster than most of our competition. We believe that as the markets open up, that learning will, will you know, stand us in good stead and we will be able to open up quicker than most other players. Secondly, during challenging times like this, and this is a scenario which is you know, even more unique than last year because there are challenging times both on COVID and the lockdown and therefore demand, but there are also challenging times in terms of the significant commodity price increase. At times like this, we believe 
that the investments we have made in our processes, systems, and capabilities, the investments we have made over this period in our people and our brand will enable us to come out stronger than most of our competition. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaonkar from Jeffries, India. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, could you quantify our current distribution strength, Pan India, and also the breakup of rural versus urban? And lastly, your thoughts on utilization of robust cash on your balance sheet and CAPEX FN. Thank you. Okay. Matthew, you want to take the first one? And then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, in terms of uh, our distribution, we measure it by what we call reach. If I look at, let's take FAN, for example. In fans, uh, today we, uh, you know, this year in, during the entire financial year, we improved our, uh, you know, uh, our distribution reach, availability of our reach of our product fans by almost three percentage points. So, yeah, today you know, uh, available in almost fifty-five percent of outlets. This is by far, you know, the, even within the year, the uh, the biggest gain in terms of uh, driving reach improvement has been by Cronkinen. That's one of the primary reasons where we have also got a significant improvement in share. So if I look at other categories, for example, in water heaters, where we have been rapidly gaining a share, also our, our reach has almost grown by 60%, you know, you know, in the last uh, in the last 18 months. In lighting, our, our reach is only around 30%, and that's an area, you know, where we intend to focus as we go forward. Sandeep, you can take the question on cash. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, I'll take it. So we... Um... You know, our, our business model remains uh, quite asset light and with a negative working capital, uh, the business is being able to convert over 100% of the profit before tax into cash. And that gives us among our peer set the most uh, healthy balance sheet. And that certainly has come in very handy in these disruptive times because We've obviously ensured that in, in in times when market is disrupted and our collection cycle gets disturbed, we've ensured on-time payment to all our vendors. And a large number of our vendors are uh, micro and small and medium enterprises. Uh, having said that, uh, obviously, you know, beyond a certain point, uh, we do not want to keep uh, ID cash. The objective is to reinvest that in the business. Uh, I think as had been referred earlier or has been mentioned in one of the earlier calls, we remain on the lookout for inorganic opportunities, which you know, which we will be pursuing. Uh, so that would be the first and the best way to reinvest and redeploy the cash. Uh, and you know, in case over a over a period we are not able to. Uh, to close any such a transaction, we would look to give it back to shareholders in the form of dividend or some other way. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, my question is specifically on the appliances portfolio and within that, uh, in specific uh, air coolers and mixer grinders. I would appreciate if you could answer my question into two parts. One is in terms of new products and the gaps that you have filled, and second is in the reach. Uh, and and uh, how are we seeing the ramp up? And uh, also related here, last year in the same time, uh, you highlighted because of the COVID when sh shut down, uh, investments in air coolers was decelerated. Yeah, Matthew, you want to take that? Yeah. Uh, so you know, like as you, as as you know, you know, we have picked three categories uh, to focus on to grow our appliances business. One was water heaters, air coolers, and mixer grinders. Of course, the first one we took off was water heaters, and that's why you know, as I mentioned before, we moved from being number six, number seven to being number three, and close to being number two in water heaters. The air coolers, I would say, the journey is roughly twelve to eighteen months behind what it is in water heaters. 
So if I look at the last 18 months, you know, or even 24 months, we have been the fastest growing company in the air coolers business. Uh, you know, we, last year, we, a lot of our business was driven through a range refresh in, uh, in desert coolers. Uh, unfortunately, last year, of course, during the peak period, we had the COVID impact, which, which, meant, which meant that we could not get the full impact of the, of the introductions we made. This year, we have expanded that, uh, you know, the range, the range enrichment from desert coolers also to tower coolers and personal coolers. So now we have a full, fully enriched range uh, across the entire air cooler category. Now, however, of course, this year, again, as you know, April, May is peak period for air coolers, and, you know, the lockdowns have impacted even this year, as expected, like it impacted last year. But, you know, for us, I think it does not change, uh, you know, our long-term strategy on air coolers, which is to drive, uh, you know, growth through offering differentiated propositions. That's one. Second, in terms of mixer grinders, I would say in the last uh, six months or, or the, since the end of May 1, we have been growing, we have been doubling our uh, mixer grinder business. But in mixer grinder, we start from a very low base. We have a low single-digit share. So even with doubling the sales, you know, you know, we, we, you know it's, not, it's not good enough. So we have a full-fledged product program in place. We, the objective is to revamp our entire product portfolio in a period of 12 to 18 months. Like we did for uh, you know for what we does and air cooler, so I think uh, mixer grinder is is also following that trajectory, and our objective is to to get disproportionate growth in all these three categories going forward. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adesh Mehta from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Just a bookkeeping question. Um, in terms of tax write backs, how much amount do we have available for next year or so? Sandeep? So, these are, you know, we have taken a certain uh, position in our uh, tax returns and in our accounts, uh, which we wanted to get validated or confirmed during the assessment process. Uh, and it was, so I think, so that, that so in, in our books, we did not consider the benefit. And uh, only when it was finalized or considered by the tax authorities on an year-on-year -year basis, we have written back that tax component. Uh, bulk of that is done. I think only one more year uh, uh, would be left. Thank you. Yeah. The next question is from the line of Kayur Harish Pandya from ICCA Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for good results. Uh, so my question is on, so if you can just give more idea about how uh, the airplane may have been uh, for us and just want to ask that um, how the inventory in the channel would uh, impact uh, the recovery for our primary sales? I mean, what is the situation of uh, uh, channel inventory? Uh, is it high considering that uh, we have done quite a good sales in Q4? Matthew? Yeah. Obviously, you know, if, the, if, the, if we are going to compare with last year, okay, because let's compare with last year. You're right. Last year, in the last 15 or 20 days of March, there was no sales. Uh, uh, and it was shut down, in, you know, and typically the second half of March, or actually the whole of March is a period when there is significant, uh, you know, loading of inventory in the trade. As the trade, you know, loads up inventory in expectation of April, May sales. Last year, it did not happen because of the lockdown that happened in uh, March. This year in March, the sales was good. Both the sell-in and sell-out was good. So if you ask me on the 1st of April this year, obviously the, the stocks are slightly higher than, than what it was last year. Uh, but... You know, if you consider, you know, if you consider a year before or, or a normal year, the first of April inventory is not high, but compared to last year, it is high. So, if you ask me, you know, when the pandemic, uh, you know, when the wave two subsides, uh, is the pickup in is, is the pickup in primary sales going to be as sharp as last year? It's difficult to say because it also depends on the underlying demand and how the underlying demand comes back. Uh, so there is, uh, you know, but of course one needs to factor in. The fact that uh, the, the the trade stocks are higher than last year, but eventually how the how the subsequent months will play out will actually depend only partially on the opening stocks of, of the channel. 
will more depend on how the demand comes back eventually because otherwise it's just a question of 15 20 days here or there so so that's something on which uh, on which the the the, the trajectory of the next few months will be determined yeah thank you the next question is from the line of shreyash bukhanwala from canara rubico mutual fund please go ahead uh thanks for the opportunity sir uh so my question was on the lighting margins uh, uh which we have delivered this quarter uh around 15 and a half percent so what has driven that and how how should we look at it uh, on more sustainable basis yeah, i'll i'll let sandeep uh, take that but just one point before sandeep takes it um as far as the lighting margin goes we need to recognize that the past few years was extremely turbulent as uh, there was a l- huge amount of price erosion which was supported over time by cost reduction also that price erosion especially on the b2c segment had largely stopped and as the costs continue to come down the margins are improving right so that's what i mentioned that now with the price erosion on b2c largely stopping this critical strategic categories fundamental structural profitability has been restored right so uh, that's a very positive thing for uh, i believe for not just us but for the industry as a whole sandeep you got anything more you want to add on the margin no no i think you you covered it uh, very comprehensively uh, and and we see no reason why uh, margin should uh, you know while while yes they they are not going to hold the same the same line but structurally uh, double digit margins are very much sustainable in lighting yeah thank you The next question is from the line of Rahul from High Tong. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> Sir, firstly, congratulations on a uh, good performance in the quarter. Uh, you've given a lot of uh, segmental information for the fourth quarter. Could you, uh, you know, give the revenue breakup of you know, important categories like uh, fans, appliances, uh, pumps, LEDs, you know, for the full year? Uh, to Sandeep. So we share that information. No, no, we 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 don't share uh, that information. Uh, we can so that that information. I'm sorry, we will not be able to uh, share detailed breakup of the uh, categories below the segment. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Bed from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for the strong results. uh my two Thank questions you, are um uh, firstly um, since you mentioned that uh, among the other segments lighting is a segment where the reach is the lowest um so would it be right that the next mna should be expected in the lighting segment largely to expand uh, the reach in the market share and if so uh, do we have any timelines or any prospects on cards for this segment uh, also uh, what would be the kind of cost savings uh, from project unnati that we are targeting for fy22 uh, do we have any broad numbers or targets for this uh, category as of now or for this uh, savings as of now yeah uh, uh renu on uh, the first first question obviously i can't comment it's not appropriate for me to comment on uh, the second unnati sandeep So our target uh, this year would be around. I mean, obviously the target assumed uh, normal normal year uh, would have been around 175 crores of savings. Yeah, 175 crores. Yeah, but that assumed as I said a normal year. If few months are going to get washed out because of uh, lockdown, then that target will have to be suitably uh, recalibrated. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Archal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, and, uh, one question is uh, with respect to market share. If you could give the uh, market share we have in uh, uh, fans, uh, uh, pump, uh, lighting, and appliances, sir. And secondly, just uh, a clarification uh, on the cost savings in Unnati. 
Um, what are the key hits here where we see the cost reductions? Sir, if you could uh, comment on that as well, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, so Matthew, you want to take that? I, I couldn't hear properly. Can you repeat? So, with respect the to first one was uh, market market share in the subcategories, and the yes. second question was uh, what are the broad heads in which we're getting cost saving in our Okay, let's. Uh, so, market share in appliances, you asked, right? In the different categories. Fans, appliances. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sir. my sound is not a little clear. Okay, anyway, in, in you know, in, in fans and pumps, residential pumps, we have we have market share of roughly 27, 28 percent. Uh, now again, in um, if I look at lighting, the market share is lower. The the, the B two C LED market share is only around eight to ten percent. You know, in that range, depending on you know which quarter you're talking about. In appliances, of course, in water heaters, it is the one in which we have roughly fifteen percent market share. In the other categories, which is mixer grinder and uh, air cooler, the estimated market share is in single digits. In Unnati, of course, uh, you know the, the the cost saving is on different heads. I think the biggest saving is still in terms of uh, you know the product cost. The product costs are primarily there are different levers on which uh, you know the Unnati has delivered the, you know multiple year results. One is in terms of <clears throat> you know what do I call what I call uh, some level of uh, product redesign. So you know uh, that would mean, for example, use of alternate materials. That is one option, the one one lever. It could be redesigning the product in terms of you know eliminating those uh, features for which the consumer doesn't see any 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 value. So eliminating what I call uh, non-value added features, which actually add a cost but doesn't add any meaning to the consumer. Uh, number three would be you know negotiating better. So you know, one of the things we have done over the years is to set up a a central purchase organization so that we can negotiate as one company rather than as four businesses. Uh, looking at you know alternate vendors where it makes sense. Looking at alternate country sourcing where it makes sense. Is all. That is one 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 set of cost. Second one is you know uh, optimizing the the processes within the within within the sourcing locations and the factories. How do I make our factories and our our, our co partners more efficient in terms of manufacturing and so on and so forth. So the whole gamut of cost. Then there is uh, also an indirect cost. So can we can we have our logistics costs, you know, more efficient and so on and so forth. So I would say pretty much every element of cost is being worked on. That's the only way we can have, you know, five years of such huge savings. So that's how that is proceeding. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. So my first question is again in your project in Hatti. So you know, if I go by the number you indicated, 175 crore, uh, that if I look at it on a second half revenue basis, that translates to you know, roughly one and a half two percent on margin. So if not in fiscal 22, like do we have fairly high visibility that maybe with a lag of three to six months, uh, this is like low hanging fruit for us? Well, uh, see, your you're right. Our ongoing goal on Unati has been to save about a point and a half every year. However, it is important to realize that this then gets reapplied in different ways. For example, part of it definitely has gets reapplied against commodity inflation. Part of it gets reapplied in greater investments in capability and brand building. If you think of our business over the years, we have made significant investments in almost every area of the business. The investments, for example, which we're making today in building our R&D capability or our go-to-market capability, all of this is reapplication of savings which we are creating through the UNATI program. So that continues unabated. In fact, given the commodity increases, we double down and try and accelerate some of that. But it's not right to necessarily assume that this will all flow into margin. No. This is, if you will, the source of funds for investing in our business and brand growth. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Srinidhi Karlekar from HSBC. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on great set of numbers. Sir, uh, I just had a, a question on fan industry demand coming from rural India. According to your assessment, sir, how much of the volume demand of fan comes from that 6 lakh villages we have? And how is the demand, like in terms of brands, is it a very different what a rural villager uh, buys compared to a say, tier 2, tier 3 town uh, uh, customer? Matthew? Yeah, I see. Look, so, so in terms of, you know, uh, our, our, you know, our penetration into the rural market, to be honest, is very limited. Okay. Uh, bulk of our sales comes from the urban markets and, uh, and more so from the towns which are one lakh and above. Okay. Now, our current, you know, when we say rural or urban, you know, distribution expansion, we are basically talking about expanding, you know, our, 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 the reach of our products to, ta to towns which are 10,000 population to one lakh population. Okay. So I would say still largely urban, but maybe we, we might just touch the, the higher end of the rural area. So I don't think we are really talking hardcore rural into that extent. Uh, you know, but what we have seen, at least in the, in the lower tier of urban markets and, and, the, uh, and the bigger towns, we don't see a significant difference in the kind of products that sell. Uh, because I think that, uh, that, that expectation that what sells in, 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 the, in rural or urban is, is only the lower, uh, you know, lower specified specification product is not really borne out by data. So, so we don't think that, you know, a significantly different portfolio will be required to satisfy to the, the to cater to the demand in the urban market. Yeah. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Shantanu Khosla for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join the, join the call. As always, our objective in these calls is to try and be as transparent and open as we can to give you a better understanding of our business and how we're looking at our business. As always, if you've got, you know, any questions in terms of follow-up or uh, we weren't able to get to, please feel free to contact any of us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to address them. Finally, uh, please stay healthy, stay safe, look after your families. Uh, that's the most important thing. And uh, if you have the opportunity, get vaccinated. Thank you so much and take care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Batliwala and Karani Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.